Hey, what's happening, y'all? It's me coming back at you again with another um, post-fight vid. So, Guillermo Rigondeaux stops James Jazza Dickens in the uh, second round via TKO. Um, this is a very, very unique and uh, awkward situation. Awkward fight, I should say. <laughs> um, Rigondeaux, you know, he is a notorious slow starter or whatnot. He's one of those uh, fighters who's defensively very good. And he likes to fill out his opponent before he um, likes to engage. So, I mean, there, was, there wasn't really no action in the fight, to be honest with you. Um, the only action that occurred is was in the um, second round where Gandalf hit Diggins with a crunching sweeping left hook. I mean, left coming in, overhand left hook. I mean, it landed flush on Dickens, um, uh, Jazz Dickens' um um, face, right side of his face. That uh, prompted him to, you know, to launch a uh, barrage of assault on Rigondeaux. And of course, Rigondeaux is as defensively good at he de defensively good that he is. He was able to slip out of those punches and get out of the way. So, um, you know, Dick Dickens didn't really. I don't recall him punching this fight, even though it lasted two rounds. But I don't think he landed one shot. And Guillermo Rigondeaux, by that matter, you know, he didn't really, you know, he didn't throw much, but you know, he landed a few of the shots, even though he he threw less shots. So. I mean, two southpaws. That's what happens when you, you know, when southpaw fighters do tend to fight. They tend to be, you know, more southpaw fighters tend to be more defensively um, minded than they are offensively. So, um, both fighters fought cautiously, you know, while the fight lasted. So, uh, yeah. So, like I said, uh, Guillermo Reagan wins via TKO second round. You know, glad to see him back in, you know, in the ring. You know, at least he can be active. You know, at least he can get some fights here and there. But the one thing I have to say is this. I know he called out Scott Quigg for a fight. And Scott Quigg, you know, was one of the guys who ducked to ring it out in the Super Bantamweight division. So I think what he needs to do is go move up and find some challenges in the next weight classes. I know there's going to be a weight disparity there, but I don't see that being that much of a difference. Uh, give back to Leo Santa Cruz and Carl Frampton moved up in weight. So my suggestion to get is just go ahead and move up in weight, find some challenges in the um, – in the um, in the featherweight vision, and uh, you know, it doesn't have to be just Carl, you know, Carl Frampton, Lee Santa Cruz. There's other fighters there that could be um, that could be, pose a challenge to him, like um, Abmaris. That'd be a good fight, or maybe Johnny Gonzalez. I think Johnny Gonzalez is probably past his best, but it'll still be an interesting fight. But other than that, yeah, I just think that uh, yeah, it's it's time for him to move up. I don't. I think he needs to go find challenges in the featherweight division. Go after, you know, try to go after the champions that ducked him, and you know, that ducked him, you know, in that particular division. But if you can't get fights with him. Move on to the else. That's all I gotta say. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think. I think Guillermo Rigondeaux should go from here. Do you just stay at the bantamweight and try to clean house there, or he, should he move up and find challenges in the featherweight division where the champions that are there, like Frampton and Sienna Cruz, ducked him blatantly, and you know, try to call their bluff and get challenges with them up in that weight class. So let me know what you think. I'm signing off. Peace.